Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm your teacher, Demotro, and today I need to teach you why the word thrieven needs to be in the dictionary. If you don't know what thrieven is, let me explain. Something in a thrieven amount is something that is not thrawed. Now, when I explain it like that, most people understand, but just to clarify, Threeven does just mean a multiple of three, or to be mathematical, something congruent to zero in mod three. But even just means something that's a multiple of two, and odd just means something that isn't, and they get nicknames. So why doesn't threeven? Well, maybe because our society doesn't understand that threevenness is almost as essential and fundamental as evenness is. Let me show you. Now, even and odd are in the dictionary because things working in quantities of two is very fundamental in life. Being doubled or being cut in half, those are a common way of comparing larger or smaller quantities. Maybe you got one of something compared to something about twice as big as it. But any time that you have a one to two ratio, your proportions are one third and two thirds of the whole three is hiding inside two all along. Now, when I talk about threeven things, a lot of people say, well, do we need to make a name for fourven for things that are multiples of four? But we don't need the nickname fourven because multiples of four can just be called doubly even. In fact, that's actually already an accepted mathematical way of describing multiples of four, because even really means you can split a quantity in half and still have whole numbers. And a multiple of four can be split in half twice and still get whole numbers. So we don't need fourven in the mix. What about fieven for multiples of five? Well, I'm not against fieven, but it's so much less fundamental to our world, to nature, to art, to math, than threeven is, that fieven maybe we can save for later and focus on our threeven quest for now. Now, if we look at the full list of possible nicknames, multiples of one are just called integers or whole numbers. Multiples of two, of course, are even. Multiples of three should be more commonly known as threeven. Then we get our doubly evens, ones that maybe will go on our feven in the dictionary quest someday in the future, but less necessary. And then a great star of many aspects of mathematics and nature, the threeven even numbers. Then you get one we could potentially call Seven if you wanted to, then a triply even and a doubly threeven. So all of the magical properties that nine has in our system of counting that I showed in an earlier episode are actually magical properties that doubly threeven numbers have in our base. Knowing that throds, numbers that aren't threeven, can come in two types. A pre-threeven throd that lands one less than a threeven number, or a post-threeven throd that's one more than a threeven number. Well, with these three types of threevens and throds, mixed with evens and odds, we get a really cool six-number cycle that repeats, where every integer will fall in one of these categories and then go forward from there with the next integers. We're just describing it in mod six, but you can really think of it as what types of remainder could a number have after dividing by six? If the remainder was zero or it's congruent to zero in mod six, it's a three even even number. And after that comes a post three even odd, then a pre three even even, then a three even odd, then a post three even even, then a pre three even odd, then the cycle continues with another three even even. And interestingly, the only ones of these that are multi-digit numbers and prime numbers can be a pre-threeven odd or a post-threeven odd. Only numbers congruent to one or five in mod six, apart from the minuscule primes two and three, can be prime. Now, threeven numbers are obviously based around the number three, and so many things in our existence come in threes. We got the past, present, and future. We name time often after morning, afternoon, and night, also giving you three meals commonly stated, a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner. 
In a line, you have a left, a center, and a right. And you have things like three-leaf clovers and trilogies of movies. Now, these things can be single threes, but a lot of them can also extend, if you have multiple of them, into various three-even numbers. Like, say you're planning for a camping trip and you want one meal for each of these, a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner. Well, for each full day you're on the camping trip, you'll need a pack of three-even amount of meals. And let's say that you're in a patch of clovers. Well, it's so expected that a patch of clovers will be a three-even amount that if it turns out to be a throd amount, that's considered a lucky charm, a four-leaf clover. And how about trilogies? So many things have it, a sequel, and then one I think we should call a threequel that make up a trilogy. In fact, some franchises like Star Wars make trilogies on trilogies. They insist on having their movies come out in a threeven quantity. And that's just the start of all the threevens in our world. If you look at a lot of common game pieces even, Checkers has a threeven amount of pieces per side, Connect 4 has a threeven amount of circles in it, even Chess, which doesn't have a threeven amount of pieces per side, happens to have a threeven amount of different types of piece per side, and threeven quantities come all throughout nature too. Not only plants like three-leaf clovers, but what about animals? The most common type of limb on the planet planet is an insect leg. And all insects are known for having six legs. So a patch of insects, if you've got a bunch of flies around, there's a three-even even amount of limbs there. And even with us, humans, which we think as more of even things than three-even things due to our symmetry, we have a lot of three-evens in us too. If you look at our arms, they're made up of three parts. We got our hand, our uh, four forearm and our upper arm, meaning that in total with our limbs, if we talk about the parts, we got six parts up here and six parts down there with our legs. Now, even if we zoom in onto the hands, we always say, oh, we got 10 fingers. But our thumb is a kind of special, different, opposable digit. We really have more so eight fingers. And what if we zoom in on them a little bit and see that each of our fingers have three segments, making a total actually of 12, a three-even amount of segments there. Threevens are all over our timekeeping systems, like the amount of months in a year. Everything about a clock, the minutes, seconds, or hours are threeven even amounts. And threevens are even all over our supermarkets, with things like drink containers coming in threeven amounts. Eggs always come in threeven amounts. Like when I was at the supermarket, the options for eggs were to have like a six, a 12, an 18, or a 30. All of the options were threeven even amounts. And egg containers are a two-dimensional layout, basically, of how many things are in the box. But you could have a 3D box, too. Like, imagine this was a box with a bunch of smaller dice or something in it. Well, only one of the dimensions would have to be threeven for the whole amount of mini boxes or dice inside it to be a threeven amount. Threevens are so contagious in that way. And if you were packaging those dice boxes in a truck or something, even if each of the dice boxes didn't have a threeven amount in it, even if just one of the dimensions of the truck was threeven, then the whole thing would have a threeven amount. And one of the deepest ways that threevens appear in the world is within colors. Now, in light, there are three primary colors that all other colors could be derived from, along with the tints of white and black. And those three primary colors with light are actually blue, red, and green. Now, those would have the same patterns I'm about to show, but we'll use the three primary colors you may be more familiar with. The three primary colors that generate all colors when painting on a canvas. You got your red, you got your blue, and you got your yellow. Now if we mix these colors just in a pure ratio where I'm getting a little yellow and blue there, I'm getting a little bit of yellow and red there, and a little more yellow in the mix, 
and we're getting a little bit of blue and red there. These generate what's known as the secondary colors. But what if we went further? What if I mixed those two or those two? Well, now instead of three more that would be added, there are six more in between colors that could be generated known as tertiary colors. And if you went beyond that, the amount generated at each stage would be larger, but still a thrieven amount of colors at each stage. All right, that's probably enough playing with colors for now. Let me show you one more awesome mathematical trait of threevens. You may know the trick where if you add the digits of a number, the sum will be threeven if and only if the number itself is threeven. Like the number 159 must be threeven because its digits add up to 15, a threeven number, whose digits, of course, add up to another threeven number. And some people say, oh, that's just a casual random trait because we happen to count in base 10. And I say, yeah, base 10 sucks. We should switch our base and count a different way. Way. But threes might still have this superpower or a different superpower in another base. The reason that threes have this superpower is because threes are a factor of nine, the number one less than the base we counted. Oh. And so this would be a superpower of three even numbers in any numerical base, one more than a multiple of three, or in other words, in any post three even numerical base, threes have that superpower. And in a three even numbered base, three evens would have an even clearer superpower. The one that even numbers currently have, where the last digit of a number would be three even if and only if the number was three even. So if we were smart and counted in something like base 6 or base 12 like blocks do, then we would get a better superpower for evens and threevens. But really, even in other bases, in one third of the bases, they have that superpower for threevens. In one third, it has that. And in the other third of bases, uh, threevens actually have a similar superpower to what Eleven was able to do with a weird divisibility trick in my palindromes episode. Now, it might seem like I'm asking a lot to add a new word to an official dictionary like the Oxford English Dictionary or Merriam-Webster, but those dictionaries have added tons of random words weird words over the past decade. The Oxford Dictionary has words like schmoozefest to mean an event where you do a lot of schmoozing, or bridey to mean someone who is bride-like, or phablet with a ph to mean a device between the sizes of a phone and a computer. Like a... Ah. And it's not just them. The Oxford Dictionary has adorbs as a word, and the Merriam-Webster Dictionary has adorkable as a word. Merriam-Webster has tons of weird ones, too. So with all those crazy words in the dictionary, why can't we add threeven? So between numerical properties and colors and eggs and clocks and all of these things... <laughs> I believe that threevens are an inherently fundamental concept that really got to be in the dictionary. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I have a lot more threeven knowledge stacked to share with you guys about pure threevens, which are not just multiples of three, but powers of three, about a thorough roast of the million billion illions all being terrible numbers, and at some point I'll start a whole petition to make sure that threeven gets in the dictionary. So leave a comment about your favorite threeven thing. Thanks for joining me in combo class today, and let's get that word in the dictionary.